Father, we come before your presence on this morning with singing. We come before your presence with praise, with thankfulness in our hearts, with glory and honor and majesty, God, ours, because we have blessed your name and we've magnified you on this morning. Now, Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. I ask, God, that you will put flesh under subjection, cast the devil out of the mind, God, and let your word go forth even now, God, in the name of Jesus, that it may cut to and fro, God, that it may clean, oh, God, and separate those things that are unlike you, oh, God, that we may be receivers and receptive to your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I ask, God, that your word will fall on good soil, oh, God. I bind the devil on every hand right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebukes you, and you will not get the glory out of God's word on this morning. And so, God, let your word fall on good soil, God. We bind the thickets, and we bind the thorns, and we bind the stony ground. God, you are worthy to be praised, and you're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy to be magnified, and Lord, we only can uh, boast in your word. And so, bless us, God. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathways. Help us to take the word and hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. And we'll be careful to give it to you, the glory and the honor and the praise. We thank you even now. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. We say thank God, amen and amen. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. God, thank you. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify you. Hallelujah. For your good, God, and your mercy is forever. As you're standing with me this morning, turn quickly with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 14. And we will be reading verses 1 through 4, verse 10, and then verse 15. Exodus, chapter 14. We'll start reading at verse 1, go to 4. We'll skip down to verse 10. And then we'll skip down to verse 15. And the Bible declares this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihareth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal-Zephon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he should follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. Skip on down to verse 10. It declares, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Skip on down to verse 15 where the Lord declares, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they should go forward. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Why are you crying? He said, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward, that they go forward. As we continue in the year of the shift, that we're looking for God to take us higher and higher each and every day of our lives. For a few moments this morning, I would like to preach from this topic. It's a setup. Come on, say with me. It's a setup. 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 And it's time for us to go over. It is a setup. And it's time for us to go cross over. As I've learned over 
uh, the last couple of years or several years of my life, I've come to the understanding and the conclusion uh, that life is filled with many ups, many downs, and most definitely uh, a number of swift transitions. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be rich or you can be poor. You can be black, brown, yellow, or whatever color you may be. Uh, you can be saved. You can be unsaved. You can have a title and you may not even have a title. But no matter who you are, it is a guarantee that we will experience trouble in this life, obstacles in this life, and challenges during and throughout our lifetime. Since God's word is his bond, and you all know that God's word is his bond, because God said it, it shall come forth. It shall happen because God's word is his bond. God is not like man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. So when God declares it, it shall come to pass. And because Jesus is the living word, no longer do we have to re uh, uh, rely upon the word being just in paper, but we have the living word with us. And the living word made this declaration in John 16 and 33. He said, in the world, ye shall have tribulations. And when Jesus declared that, he guaranteed that each and every single one of us would have some bumps, uh, some bruises, some bumpy roads, and some stormy seasons that come in our lives. And so to me, it would seem uh, uh, that in my limited understanding, uh, I would come to the conclusion uh, that since I belong to God, that I should have some type of uh, difference. There should be some type of difference in the results or in the things that we have to go through in this life. That's just in my uh, carnal mind. That's just in my fleshy mind. Uh, my mind would say uh, we shouldn't have to lose our homes or have housing issues um, since we belong to God because the word of God declares that God is is our refuge. It tells me, my mind tells me we shouldn't have to file for bankruptcy or have to deal with financial situations in our lives because the Bible, because, because I belong to God and the Bible tells me that God is a provider. Uh, in my mind, uh, not just that, in my mind, uh, my mind would say we shouldn't have to go through um, surgery or we shouldn't have to go through sickness or we shouldn't have to go through chemotherapy or whatever afflictions you may be going through in your body um, because we belong to God. And because we belong go to God, we shouldn't have to go through certain situations and certain storms in life because the Bible declares and the word declares that God is a healer. But I've learned during my short time here on earth um, that my thinking is limited. That, that I don't understand everything that God is doing and that I cannot comprehend the vastness of God's thinking. I cannot comprehend the, the vastness of God's plans. I cannot understand and comprehend the actions that God determines to do on each and every day of my life. And I come to the conclusion, according to the word that God declared to Isaiah, he said, for my thoughts are, are, are not your thoughts. And he says, my ways are not your ways. He made this declaration. He said, for as high as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts and so I only can see here and I only can come to the conclusion is that I can only see to the back of this wall but God can see way down further along the roadway and so I only have a limited ability to see I only can think about today but God just doesn't think about today but God thinks about today and tomorrow he thinks months and years in advance when I only can take time to think about today. I can only imagine what tomorrow holds, but God already knows what my tomorrow holds, and what God does is he meets me from my ending and works his way back to where I'm at today. God's ways and thoughts are so far above my ways and my thoughts that I can't even comprehend what God can do. I can only imagine just tending to my family and taking care of my family, but God is a God of nations. God is a God God of generations. God is a God of the world. And so God's ways are far above my ways and his thoughts are far above my thoughts. And when I find myself standing before an awesome God, I can't help but to declare what Isaiah said because I because God is so wonderful and God's ways are so magnificent and his ways and his thoughts are so glorious. Uh, when Isaiah got uh, uh, came face to face with God, he said this. He says, woe is me for I am undone 
because I am a man of unclean lips and I'm a living and I dwell amongst a people uh, with unclean lips. He said, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. As much as I may want to complain about situations, as much as I may want to complain about my life and circumstances, God's ways are far above my ways and my limited capacity cannot see what God has coming and waiting for me in my life. And so we got to trust God and we can't lean unto our own understanding. But the writer said in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy pathways. I hope you all are praying for me. I won't be before you long. And so as I sit back and watch the magnificence of God's glory being performed in my life and in the lives of others, I've come to this conclusion. Yes, I don't understand everything that God does, but I've come to this conclusion that we will really never, ever know God truly until we've been through something in our lives, until we've gone through a storm, until we've gone through affliction, until we've gone through challenges. We'll never really know who God is and know really what he can do on our behalf. As much as we don't want to have weapons form against us, but if the weapons never form, we'll never realize that they cannot prosper because God's word declares that the weapon, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. As much as I don't like to be sick. But if I never had been sick, I would have never known God to be a healer. I had to become sick to know that God can heal and that he is still the bomb in Gilead. As much as I don't like to be broken, I've had some broke days and I've had some heels to climb. But if I'd never been broke, I would have never known that God is a provider. And so no wonder the songwriter wrote and declared, I've been through the storm and I've been through the rain, but I've made it. I've had some heartache and I've had some pain, but I made it. I've had some ups and I've down and some downs. I've all been almost leveled to the ground, but hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I made it. Can anybody else have that song as a, a cry from your heart that I made it? I've been through some trials. I've been through some tribulations, but if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Would I be here standing today? when the devil thought that he had me God said not so and I was able to get away I don't know about you but I'm thankful today that God has been on my side from the beginning and I know that he'll be all the way on my side all the way till the end trials and tribulations sickness and pain I need you all to know today that is just a setup to get to know God better the more I'm tried the more I get to know God better the more I go through the more opportunities I have to get to go to know God better and if we would just shift our thinking we would come to the understanding that complaining does not do anything for God that complaining about our situations and complaining about our storms they don't do anything for God because God doesn't move in the midst of complaining but what God does he miss he moves in the midst of praise he he moves in the midst of faith he moves in the midst of God willing people willing to surrender to God where he, he moves and when we submit to God as we heard learned um, this morning doing Sunday school God moves in those type of things and so we got to shift our thinking and instead of complaining when things don't go our way instead we begin to give God glory Lord I thank you for my heels Lord I thank you for my trials Lord I thank you for my tribulations Lord I thank you for being God all by yourself Jesus told Martha that Lazarus' sickness was not unto death, but it was just a setup for them to get to know God better. Peter didn't want to go to prison, you all, but it was a setup that God, that the people of God would know that prayer changes things. Uh, Paul didn't want to have to, I mean, sorry, David didn't want to have to fight the bear, nor did he want to have to fight the lion or Goliath, but it was a setup to get to know God better. Job didn't want to have to lose everything, but it was a setup to get double for his trouble. You all need to know that God is setting you up for greater. He's setting you up for bigger things. He's setting you up for something higher than you can even imagine. The word declares in Roman in 1 Corinthians 2, he says eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what good things God has in store. He has in store for us. And so I don't know about you, I've come to the realization that everything that God has allowed to come my way, it's been a setup. 
God has worked it together for my good so that I'll get to know him better and that I'm reminded that I can, I can go through, I can do it, I can make it because of Christ who strengthens me. I need you all to know this morning that it's all a setup. And in our scripture text on this morning, we see the greatest setup that can ever happen. What we see here in our scripture text in Exodus chapter 14 is we see that the children of Israel is being set up for their shift. If you all know and take time to read the book of Exodus starting at the beginning, you'll find out that delivering them from captivity was the beginning of God's setup in their lives. But the setup actually began a little bit further than that. God began the setup for this situation when he allowed Joseph to be sold into prison. You all need to know that what the devil meant for evil, God means it for your good. Oh God, thank you Jesus. Let me declare that one more time. What the devil meant for evil, God said I'm working it together for your good. Yes, you don't understand why people are talking about you but God means it for your good yes you don't understand why people don't like you on your job but it's a setup for God to get the glory yes you don't understand why your spouse is not acting right or those close to you are not acting right but it's just a setup that God can bring deliverance and get the glory out of your life and so from Joseph all the way to this point here God was setting up things to work together for their good too often we don't want to change we're content with staying on the other side of the Red Sea but guess what would have happened if they decided to stay on this side of the Red Sea if they decided to stay on this side of the Red Sea then they would have went back into captivity and God wouldn't have gotten the glory out of their lives we need to stop being content with where we are and look for God to take us over the seas that we have in our lives we have so many things that come into our lives that causes us to fear and causes us to fret we have financial issues and, and sometimes financial issues are they look like a big red sea I don't I don't know when the next bill is going to get paid I don't, I don't understand how the children's schools are going to be done I don't know how I'm going to get the car repaired those things are just red seas and that are before you and God saying it's just a setup so that I can help you to cross on over and that you can go on over you got sickness in your body uh, uh, your children are not acting right up uh, things are not going good on your job I'm telling you guys today it's just a setup that God is going to take you over your Red Sea and so it's just a setup and so let's look at the scripture this morning uh, it, 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 it's, it's amazing how God's plans just begin to work together for our good and, and, and let me give you a little bit more background uh, they came to this point of desolation uh, it says that they were they were trapped. Uh, the, the Pharaoh thought that they were trapped. And they found themselves in between an angry army of people who wanted them back and a Red Sea that was not going to be forgiving and life could not be sustained in the Red Sea. Uh, you, you couldn't live in that thing. You couldn't go into that thing and not come out infected or affected by something negatively. And, and we got things that are going on that it feels like we are trapped. But you need to know today, God's got your back. God got your, uh, mother said this morning, that he made everything to look forward because God got your back. He knows that the enemy is trying to come behind you and to destroy you. Uh, but I'm thankful today that I don't have to worry about the enemy being behind me because as long as I do what God has called me to do, he says, goodness and mercy, it shall follow me all the days of my life and I will be able to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, I may have to go through a uh, 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 danger seen and unseen, uh, but God is a keeper. God is a provider. God is a way maker. And that's all I got to do is keep my trust in him. They found themselves between a rock and a hard place. But they had, God has already given them the blueprint for victory. He had already showed them that he was greater than anything that the world can never do. How is it that a people that were living in the midst of a land that was filled with plagues never felt the effects of the plague? None of the plagues affected them in Goshen. Goshen was a land of promise. Goshen was a land of protection. Goshen was a land of healing and life. And they were not affected when the, when the frogs came. They were not affected when the lice came. They were not affected when the water was turned into blood they were not affected when the locusts came into the land they were not affected when the boils came you need to know that when the things are going on around you and it does not affect you that means God is keeping you you found yourself in the land of Goshen and God said I will provide for you and I will make a way for you and I will open up a door for you stop worrying 
about what's going on around you. Stop worrying what's going on with the shut-in. God's got your back. He will provide because you belong to him. They found themselves uh, protected. When the enemy around them was being tortured and brutalized by their God, you need to know that God's got your back. And he says that I'm going to fight for you. You don't have to fight for yourself, but that's all you got to do is come before my presence with singing. You open up your mouth and begin to praise me. Tell God that you are a good God and I thank you for making a way. Don't wait for the battle to be over. We need to learn that we can shout right now. It's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. And so God set them up. After he made a way of escape from Egypt, God set them up as he led them uh, to the Red Sea. God set them up so that he can get the glory out of the situation. Come on, let's look at the word of God and let me come to uh, my conclusion. He, it says here in verse four, I mean, uh, verse number one, it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, so God is speaking. You need to know, I told you all in Sunday school this morning, that it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. God is talking. And when the enemy comes against you and tells you something that word, the word of God does not say, God is talking. Uh, you may be troubled on every hand, but God is talking. And so we got to listen when God is speaking. And so verse 1 said, the Lord spake unto Moses. And then God told him that it was a setup. Look at it. He said, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before this big city with that big old word that I'm not going to say again. He says between Migdal and the sea and over against Belzephon before yet ye shall encamp by the sea. So they were surrounded by the wilderness and the Red Sea was behind them and there was no place to escape. So God set them up to be trapped. Can you all see it? God set them up to be in a difficult situation. You need to not can't go there yet. It says go to verse Verse 3 it says, For Pharaoh will say unto the children, or say of the children of Israel, that they are entangled in the land, and the wilderness has shut them in. Look at it. Come on, keep reading. And it says, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow them. You guys got to know that the things that you are going through are not by happenstance, but it's according to God's plan. God, he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. It looks like this is evil, but God had an expected end for them. You may think that things are going on by happenstance, but God is ordering your footsteps. If you can just trust God, stop worrying about what it looks like. Stop worrying about what it seems like. Stop worrying about how it feels and just let God know I trust you Lord I, and I believe your word God and I believe that you can and I believe that you will God I know that it's just a setup for your glory so he set them up and he set them up just like he set Job up he set Job up the same way he said Satan oh, what you doing with Satan and he's been thinking about you all I've been, I've been looking to and fro uh, to seek and sue, uh, see who I can devour I've been, I've been trying to figure out who I can deceive and, and God said had you considered my servant Job oh, thank you Jesus today when you get into a situation that means God considered you that means God was thinking about you because God don't want you to remain where you at but God wants you to go higher and it's a setup for your next level it's a setup up for your greater anointing it's your set up for God to get the glory out of your life he said had you considered my servant Job he's honorable he's trustworthy and he will not curse me and you can do anything but take his life and the enemy said okay I'm gonna try you at your word God and so he came about and he afflicted Job but guess what Job didn't curse God Job did not complain Job didn't come up against God because he said in all the my appointed days I'm gonna trust in the Lord I'm gonna wait until my change is come and then the devil came back to him again you've been wondering why are you dealing with situations over and over again lord i just made it over this mountain why do i got to go through another mountain well the devil came after job again he says I i'm back again uh, uh, and, and he's only doing that because uh, uh, you're keeping this hedge around his body and then god said go ahead on you can touch his body but you cannot take his life you've been going through some situations and you just got out of another situation and god is just trying to verify and let the devil know that you don't belong to him but that you belong to god stop worrying about those situations and to say oh God I love you and I magnify you and I trust you God because I know that you got great plans for my life and so just because the devil afflicted him 
Job didn't change. And because Job went through, guess what? Job got double for his trouble. What you're going through, God's got double for your trouble. It's a setup. And because if you don't go through the trouble, you can't get double. You need to know it's a setup. Just let's keep your eyes and keep your heart focused in on the Lord. Come on, let's keep going. Uh, where we go to? Um, verse 4, he talked about how he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And then he goes in and, and begins to Pharaoh and begins to perform the work. And Pharaoh decided in verse 5 that he's going to get his people together and lo and behold his heart was hardened because God said that it was going to be hardened verse 8 says and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh the king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel if the enemy don't come your way you can't go to the next level the enemy the weapon has to be formed but just because it's formed doesn't mean that it's going to kill you it's not going to prosper because God said it in his word it shall form but it won't prosper the weapon was formed the enemy came after them but there was victory on the horizon come on let's look at this victory in here uh, it said in verse 10 and when Pharaoh drew nigh the children of Israel lifted up their voice and cried unto God they, they begin to tell God that uh, the enemy is coming God I need you uh, to come and, and, and touch me I need you to come and save me I need you to come and do something God be, uh, because I, I don't want to go backwards Lord to, I, I don't want to go back to Egypt God I know that's not what they said but that's what I'm saying this morning I don't want to go back to where I was at I don't want to go back to my old carnal ways but I want to move forward I want God to get the glory out of my life and so God asked a question why are they crying unto me to speak unto the people and let them know that they need to go forward I stand before you all this morning as I come to my conclusion that it's just a setup for God to get the glory out of your life stop worrying about what's going on in your life begin to trust in God with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge God acknowledge God Lord I acknowledge you in the morning God I acknowledge you in the noonday God I acknowledge you that it's just a setup for your glory, God. Take me higher and make my feet like hind feet so that you can get the glory out of my life. God comes in in the midst of trials and in the midst of confusion. And what God does is he turns it around to work together for your good. And that's why Paul was able to declare that I know that all things work together for my good. That's the good and the bad. It's going to work together for your good. He told the people to go forward. Stop waiting where you're at. There's nothing on the rear. There's nothing to the side. He told them to go forward. And before he told them to let them know to go forward, Moses put those, the priests in before. And he said, as long as the priests lead, the waters are not going to touch them. You need to know that those things that are there to destroy you, they can't touch you. They, they can't overwhelm you. Oh, they can't destroy you. Yes, uh, the Red Sea could have destroyed them. The Red Sea could have killed them. But they went across and they crossed over to the other side and they didn't even have mud on their feet. You, you're going to come out cleaner than you ever thought you could have come out. It, it looks like everybody else around you is messed up. It looks like everybody else around you is destroyed. Uh, but God is saying if you would just trust me and if you would just believe me according to my word I'm going to allow you to cross over uh, because it's a setup for God's glory I want to encourage someone today that it's a setup it's a setup for greater I told you all earlier that G. Joseph thought that his brothers were doing him wrong. Uh, but it was a setup that God would sell him into slavery. I know they don't sound good, but the story don't just end there. Uh, he says he, Joseph thought that he was messed up because he was messed up because he had to go into Potiphar's house and be a servant. But it was just a setup so that God can make him second in command of uh, Potiphar's house. Uh, I'm sure that Joseph wasn't pleased um, that Potiphar's wife was messing with him and caused him to go to jail. Uh, but it was a setup so God will allow him to meet the butler and the baker. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you all of the story. I'm sure Joseph wasn't pleased and that he had to rest in prison, but he found favor in prison and God gave him second in command in the midst of the prison. And so I understand that Joseph didn't understand and didn't necessarily agree with having to be in Egypt, but if he had never been in Egypt, he would have never came into second in command of all of Egypt. If he had never become in second in command in all of Egypt he wouldn't have been able to save the nation he wouldn't have been able to save his family he wouldn't have been able to save that generation what we went what he went through was for the glory of God so all these things that you guys are going through it's working together 
it's working together for our good. And God needs us to go through and go over so that God would get the glory out of this life. I'm ending here. It was all a setup. God took them to the Red Sea so that he can show that he was greater than the seas. He took them to the Red Sea to let them know that God can create a bridge over troubled waters. God took them to the Red Sea because he needed to let them know that there's nothing too hard for God. Is, is there anything too hard for God? That nothing, there's absolutely nothing. We got to come to the conclusion it's a setup. When troubles and trials come our way, it's just a setup. You need to look at it with audacity. Oh, devil, you think that you're going to do something to me today, but you need to know that God will and God can and God shall do it on my behalf. God, let your glory be revealed in my life mother says this a lot what we need to declare is God whatever you're doing in this season <laughs> don't do it with don't do it without me God thank you God today whatever child you need me to go through in this season God don't don't let me go through don't do it without me God whatever change you're provoking in this season God God don't do it without me without any evil of whatever elevation you're doing in this season God just don't do it without me that's telling God I understand that it's a setup for God's glory come on resting on your feet it's a setup. It's a setup. In the season of our shift, we need to understand that it's a setup. And what God is bringing our way, what God is doing, is he's setting us up for his glory and for his honor. Every head bowed and every eye is closed. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to declare your word unto your people. God, in this season of our shift, the shift. God, we need you to help shift our minds and our focus and our thinking. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that when we see trials and we see tribulations come our way, that we'll understand that it will work together. It's a setup for you to get the glory out of our lives. I didn't say this, Lord, but you're taking it to me right now, God. James said in verse 1 and 2, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation, uh, temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. He went on to say, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. It's a setup, God, the things that you allow to come into our lives. And God, we're here to tell you, God, we submit ourselves to your will and we surrender to your way. Because at the end of this storm, at the end of this affliction, at the end of this trial, God, I want to be perfect, wanting nothing, understand that you alone are all that I need and more. Thank you for being the God that provides. Thank you for being the God that heals. Thank you for being the God that delivers and set free, God. Thank you for being the God that brings about freedom. Thank you for being the God that is the giver of life. And God, I thank you for being the God that is the sustainer of life as well. God, I thank you for being my refuge, God. Lord, I thank you for being my strength, oh God. Lord, I thank you for being a present help in the time of trouble, God. Though I may walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear because you are with me thank you God for being everything that I need and more and so we put our trust in you God because it's a setup Whew. God thank you God it's just a setup God the enemy thinks he got me but Lord I know you're going to make a way it's a setup that you'll get the glory out of my life and I know that after you try me God, Job said, I shall come forth as pure gold because it's a setup for my greater. It's a setup for my good. And so, God, get the glory out of our lives. Take us higher and higher in you and help us to see like you see and think like you think and be as you are. Help us to be holy and acceptable. And we'll be careful to give you glory and honor and praise. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. It's a setup. Tell yourself, I dare somebody to shout, it's a setup. It's a, it's a setup. It, it may not look right, but it's a setup. It's a setup. The enemy think he got you, but it's a setup. God put you in that point. God put
put you in that position so that he can get the glory out of your life. It's a setup, yes. Got to do it. Whatever you do in God, just don't do it without me. Thank you, Lord. You know. Give glory.